note that when we're looking at insurance, the whole insurance landscape gets a little bit complex because clearly we have like the normal insurance, but, and then when you get over a certain age, you might be in a Medicare situation because Medicare has kind of become like, instead of it being like a, like a benefit program for people that need it or something, it's kind of like everybody's insurance over a certain age. So that transition gets a little bit weird. And then we have the long-term insurance, which is, is in essence generally different than what we think about as our normal insurance, long-term care typically being something that my understanding, something that you're going to need in the event that you can't do the basic care of yourself, people helping, you know, you need daily care to feed yourself and go, you know, do day to day, just normal kind of activities. Uh, and so insurance for that, which is a little bit different than the normal kind of insurance. So the amount you can include for qualified long-term care insurance con con uh, contacts uh, as defined in publication 502 depends on the age at the end of 2023 of the person for whom the premiums were paid. See the following chart for details. So here's our chart. If the person was at, was at the end of 2023 age 40 or under, then the most you can include is 480. But if they're 41 to 50, you can include 890, 51 to 60, 1,790, 61 to 70, 4,770 and 71 older, 5,960. Now you would think the general idea of this is if you're younger, you're probably the, and you look at the actuarial tables, the likelihood of somebody needing long-term care, care for basic day-to-day -day kind of needs and like a, a facility to help someone out for the day-to-day -day stuff is low, right? And then, but then as you get older, then you would think, the likelihood of, of that of needing that kind of care is going to go is going to go up, right? That would be the, the general thought process. So examples of medical and dental payments, uh, you can't include.